our series, A New Leaf, Change on the Inside. We're going to find out um, what God's Word has to say about how you can affect real change in your life and how that is different um, from you know our attempts at, um, at making change in ourselves and in our own lives. So let's get started with this today. What we just established is the fact that if we want um, for our past to be made straight, we have to trust in the Lord. And you see that God sets up here a choice for us. Many times what we try to do is we try to have our life and add a little God to it to make it better, you know, kind of value added. Um, what we're going to find out in scripture though, however, is that God always makes us um, make a choice. He requires us to make a choice. You can't trust in your own understanding and add a little bit of God's wisdom because God's wisdom is going to frustrate your intelligence. It's going to frustrate your understanding because God's ways are higher than yours. And so you have to make a choice as to who you're going to trust, okay? You can trust in your own understanding or you can trust in God. So let's go into this with that understanding that we're going um, to be asked at the end here to make a choice as to what we want to do. And not only, you know, what kind of little changes we want to make in our life, but um, really what we want to do with our life, what uh, direction we want to go with our life as a whole. And God is going to be asking you to make a commitment to real change as he is doing something in the earth in these end times he is moving and all of this is prophesied in the scriptures right before Jesus return that there is going to be a change in the church and namely that change is that the church has been asleep or dead and then um, they are going to come to life or wake up from that slumber and so we see that there is a major change that is prophesied and that God is calling us to and so that call is going out um, God is asking you to make a commitment and so he's coming to you today with his word um, to show you how you can affect real change in your life. Okay, so we're going to look at the two ways that you can attempt to make changes in your life. And that was set up for us in um, this passage in Proverbs chapter 3, um, verses 5 through 6, where it says, again, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. So you've got two choices here. You can try to make your own path straight or you can trust in God to make your path straight. If you want to have change in your life, you can attempt to do it man's way or your way, right? Or you can do it God's way. So let's look to scripture and see what is the difference, okay? What is the difference between man's way of affecting change and God's way of affecting change? First of all, if you want to have a change, you have got to identify, first of all, the fact that you want change. You look and you see that there's something in your life that you're not happy with. But um, where we see the difference um, here between man's way and God's way is in the way that we judge what is wrong in our life. Um, in the way um, that we attempt to fix what is wrong with our life and what we trust in in order to get that job done. Let's look at how man judges and assesses a problem, okay? How we as humans assess our own problems and our own state. When we look and we say, okay, I know that there are some things wrong in my life. I know I'm not happy. I know that there are a lot of things going wrong. I know that there are things in my character that I'm not happy with. So we see that these things are there. Um, I'm going to show you um, the difference between how God looks at this and how we look at it. And so, uh, you know, the difference in how we try to fix these things. Okay, first of all, man looks at the outward appearance. So when you're talking about judging what's wrong with you, um, generally what you're looking at is a symptom of a problem. Okay, you're looking at an outward symptom. And Jesus said that he is a doctor who has come to uh, be a physician to sinners. Okay, the Pharisee said, why do you eat with these tax collectors and these wicked people? And Jesus said, a person who's well doesn't need a doctor. It's the sick that need a doctor. So the son of man didn't come to uh, help out the righteous. He came to help out the sinners. So understand that when God sees the things that are wrong in your life, he sees that as a sickness. Okay. And he says that throughout the scriptures. And some of you, you can see that in your life. You feel like it's a sickness. What, however, these things are popping up in your life. Sometimes they pop up as a, a physical manifestation. Okay. In your life, something that's out of kilter in your body or out of kilter um, in your health. 
um, or in, sometimes it's in your relationships and um, the things that are going on around you. But bottom line, when your paths are not straight, okay, and you are not living in the righteousness and the peace and the joy that God has promised you as a part of his kingdom that you can live in. If you're not there, then there is something that needs to be changed, okay? It's not a blame game. It's not saying, you know, um, well, if I'm sick, that's because it's my own fault. God, again, looks at the heart, and he is going to be able to see whatever what the cause is of whatever's wrong with you, whether it's physical or spiritual, emotional, relational, whatever, okay? He's going to see the cause of that. You can only see the symptoms. So if you want to be healed, you have to listen to the doctor who can um, diagnose something um, that goes a little deeper than just the symptoms. So understand, when you're assessing your problems, what you're doing is you're saying, I'm unhappy with this outward symptom. Okay. But when God is assessing your problems, he sees that there is a root cause for your problem. And that is something in your heart and in your character. And that is something that is more difficult um, to change, right? Than the outward appearance. But God is the one who has the power to change those things from the inside out through the power of his word. And that's what we're going to be working on um, through the next several weeks. The word of God is very powerful. It is very effective. Okay, and whenever we sit under it, whenever we um, we decide, make a commitment that we are going to subject ourselves to it, then it's very effective in changing us from the inside out. Okay, but we have to understand um, again that we cannot lean on our own understanding because we only see the outward symptom. Now, Isaiah fifty five six through eleven tells us this again. It says, "Seek the Lord while he may be found; call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked for Forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return to the Lord and he will have compassion on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there without watering the earth, and making it bare and sprout, and furnishing seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so will my word be which goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. So you see, God gives us a promise here. He, he entreats us, he invites us, and he invites you today. He says, seek the Lord while he may be found, but understand that the way that you think is not the way he thinks. So the judgments that he makes um, are not always going to make sense to you. His ways are higher than your ways. Okay, but the effectiveness of his word and the result of his word in your life is going to be also vastly different from the results and the effects of you trying to change your own life. Okay, many of you have probably tried to change the things about yourself that you don't like, that you see are detrimental to yourself and the, and the people around you. Many of you have experienced the frustration of trying to change those things, whether it's an addiction or an attitude um, or whatever, uh, whatever sinful pattern you have in your life. And, and you've, you've experienced the frustration of trying and trying and not being able um, to change it. Understand that God just gave you a promise. He said, if he sends his word out, if you will seek him and forsake your way, okay, understand you have to leave your own ways behind. You can't have them both. But if you will choose to seek God and say, okay, you know what? I'm not going to do it my way anymore. I know that God's way is a little more extreme. I know that God's way is going to cut me to the heart. I know that um, there's going to be some pain involved, okay, because he's doing surgery. He's doing heart surgery. He's getting down to the root of the problem. However, I also know that his word doesn't come back void. My word does come back void. My ways uh, don't work. At the end of the day, I keep going back to that old thing that I'm trying to get away from. So if you want to effect real change, you need to seek the Lord while he may be found. You need to forsake your own way, forsake your own thoughts, and you need to uh, establish a new standard, okay? And that standard is not what makes sense to you. It's not the judgments that you can make looking on the outside of your life as to what needs to be changed. It's not your judgments as to how they need to be fixed. And it's not your own understanding that you need to lean on and trust. 
trust him. But instead, you need to look to God. You need to look to God's word. And you need to allow God's word to do this job in you. Let's look at the inside versus the outside. What does this look like? Okay. Well, Jesus dealt with this all the time. This is just a common human experience because we judge from the outward appearance. And so we just try to make make things look okay on the outside. Okay, basically we want to clean up the symptoms, but understand that that does not work when you have a fatal disease. Okay, and that's what sin is in your life. Okay, and when you have a fatal disease, you may not understand all of the symptoms that come out of that. So some of the things that are going on in your life right now, you may not identify with sin. You may say, yeah, but that's that other person's fault or that's just circumstantial or whatever. But understand That regardless of what your circumstances are, that if you have the character of the Holy Spirit, if you are born again, then you're going to be able to walk in power and in peace and in joy and in righteousness regardless of the circumstances. Okay? Because this is not a change from the outside in. Understand, this is a change from the inside out. And an overcomer is not someone who can do well only when they're sailing on calm seas. An overcomer is someone who can do well, who can walk a life of victory, even when they're walking through a storm, even when they're walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Okay, so understand the change needs to happen in you. And you may not associate some of these uh, problems and symptoms with sin um, or with things that God wants to change in you. But that's what scripture tells us that God wants to work on. Okay, that's how he's going to affect change in you, not by changing your wife or your husband, not by changing your mom or your mother in law, not by changing your coworker. Okay, if you're if you're spending your time asking for God to change somebody else's heart to make your life better, you need to turn that around and you need to use the word of God the way that it's meant to be used, which is as a mirror. Understand that the way that God's going to affect change in your life is that he's going to affect change in your character. Okay, so you need to make a commitment to allow him to do that. And I'm going to read to you a little bit about, um, you know, just this idea of um, being sick and um, trying to handle the sickness um, just by dealing with it on the outside. God's people historically throughout the Old Testament, they have dealt with this problem. Okay, and um, just this problem of going back to their sin, even though they knew God, you know, and they had all the promises of God and enjoyed the goodness of God. They still kept going back to their old sin and it caused them to be very sick in every way. And he describes their state. Um, In Isaiah 1, 5 through 6, he says, Why should you be beaten anymore? Why do you persist in rebellion? Your whole head is injured. Your whole heart afflicted. From the sole of your foot to the top of your head, there is no soundness, only wounds and welts and open sores, not cleansed or bandaged or soothed with oil. So this was the state of his people whenever they would turn back to sin. And then I'm going to read to you what the reaction was um, or, or what their solution was, specifically the solution of the false prophets and religious leaders at the time. This is out of Jeremiah six fourteen through 15. It says they, um, and that's referring to the church leadership, they dress the wound of my people as though it were not serious. Peace, peace, they say, when there is no peace. Are they ashamed of their loathsome conduct? No, they have no shame at all. They do not even know how to blush. So they will fall among the fallen. They will be brought down when I punish them, says the Lord. Okay, so understand repentance from the things that caused their state of having no soundness, of being afflicted with welts and sores from from head to foot, um, both from the wages of sin, which is death, and also from the wrath of God, okay? And for those of us um, who trust in Jesus Christ, the wrath of God has no place in our lives, but trusting in Jesus Christ means that we will obey him and follow him, okay? And Jesus said that if you love me, um, you're going to obey my commandments. If you really want to be my disciple, you're going to obey my commandments. And to people who say, oh, I trust in Jesus for um, my salvation from sin, but they don't obey him, it says that he'll say to them, I never knew you. Only the one who does the will of my father can have eternal life. Okay, so trusting in Jesus does mean following his ways. Again, 
forsaking your way and your understanding and trusting in him and his ways. But they didn't want to do that, okay? And what, what the Israelites would do classically is they would get themselves into trouble because they wanted um, to pursue a sinful lifestyle, okay? Because there are pleasures that go along with sin. And we're going to talk about that, okay? Um, many times we want to change the outward symptom um, that we don't like, but we don't want to get rid of the sin that's causing it because there's a pleasure associated with that sin and we're not willing to live without that pleasure. Okay. And so that's where we're going to talk about how God is going to change our desires. But understand that if you want to get rid of the symptom, you are going to have to repent of the thing that is causing the symptom, which also probably gives you some pleasure or comfort. You have to um, be willing to die to all, everything that that thing represents, both the good and the bad, not only the things that you don't like about it, but the things that you do like about it. Okay. And that's what repentance is about. It's saying, you know what? I'm not going to let the desire for that old thing have a hold on me because I see that the result is death. And if I want to get rid of the symptom, I have to get rid of the root. If you think that you can dress yourself up on the outside and not take care of the root, that you're going to pray and, and say, like the Israelites did, oh God, please deliver us from all these problems that we're having. But they didn't want to repent, okay? If you want to be like that, understand that you will not be rid of the symptoms or the problem if you try to dress your wound as if it's not serious, okay? If you try to dress yourself up from the outside, Okay, the wounds and, and the welts and the sores that God sees, they go right down to the very heart. Okay, and that is what needs to be healed in order for your life to be changed. Matthew 23, 25 through 28. And talks about, this is when Jesus is talking to the Pharisees, and he identifies the same problem, okay, in them. These were the religious leaders, understand. So many of your religious leaders deal with this problem too, okay. It says, woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. That just means you actors, you pretenders. You clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they're full of greed and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and dish, and then also the outside will be clean. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You're like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of dead men's bones and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside, you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside, you're full of hypocrisy and wickedness. So, okay, understand, if we judge what's wrong with our lives and how to fix it, we're going to end up like the Pharisees. We're going to end up dressed up on the outside, all nice and pretty, but on the inside, full of death, full of sickness. We can't dress our wounds as if they're not serious. We have to understand that God wants to cut right down to our heart. And that's what the Bible says, that the word of God comes to do. Unlike our judgments, the word of God comes to make a judgment that is much deeper. It says in Hebrews 4, 12 through 13, for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Understand, God's word is not going to be like your judgments. It's not going to just kind of cut to the, on the surface. It's going to cut you to the heart and it's going to hurt. Okay, and that's why if you want to affect real change, you have to have a love for God that's going to get you through. Okay, you have to trust in God. So you got to love God with all of your heart with all your mind and with all your soul. You've got to have humility because he's going to be shown the things that are wrong with you, not everybody else, but you. And that's hard. That's hard to hear. Okay. So you've got to arm yourself with humility and say, okay, I'm willing to take the correction. You have to arm yourself with an extreme trust, understanding that this doctor is going to be doing things. His word is going to be doing things that hurt you, that um, are very hard to bear. Sometimes it feels like punishment, but it's actually just discipline. And God says he disciplines all those that he loves in order to give them a, a harvest of righteousness. And you see, when you are righteous, um, then you can have a good life that is free from these things. And I'm going to read to you why, okay? in Mark um, chapter 7. Righteousness 
is what we need to be after if we want to have a new life, if we want to have a good life. Because Jesus said, listen to me, everyone, and understand this. Nothing outside a man can make him unclean by going into him. Rather, it is what comes out of a man that makes him unclean. After he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about this parable. And he said, are you so dull? Don't you see that nothing enters a man from the outside can make him unclean? For it doesn't go into his heart, but into his stomach and then out of his body. In saying this, Jesus declared all foods clean. He went on, what comes out of a man is what makes him unclean. For from within, out of men's hearts, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and make a man unclean. Now I want you guys to look up Mark chapter 7, verses 20 through 23. And I want you to go through that list and I want you to say, okay, do I have any of these things in my heart? And understand that you're going to find something in there that you are dealing with and understand that that thing that is coming out of your heart is defiling your life. That thing is resulting in symptoms and you may not even see the correlation. Okay, but that's what makes you unclean and those are the things that need to change. Okay, and that's why you need the powerful weapon of the word of God to affect those very real changes in your life. That is what we're going to do in the coming weeks. In the next um, five weeks, we are going to be going straight to God's word. It's going to be very powerful and this is what God is asking you to do today. He's asking you to look at yourself honestly and say, do I want change, real change, not change that lasts just a few minutes and then goes away when I go back to my old habits, but real change that sticks, that lasts. Do I want this new life? And even if you are a Christian, there are things that God wants to change in you in these end times. Okay, so I want you to look and say, do I agree with him? Do I want this change in my life? And if the answer is yes, I want you to take this time with me right now to make a commitment. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to make a commitment to real change through the power of God's word. Father, we thank you for the privilege of coming into your presence. We thank you for the power of your holy word. And we thank you for the change that you are affecting in your people right now. As you have prophesied that you're going to do, you are making a bride that is without spot or wrinkle ready for the return of Jesus Christ. Each one of us listening today wants to be a part of that bride. And so we are making a commitment right now. I am making a commitment to you, Lord God, right now that I'm going to allow you to make change in my life. I'm asking you, I'm turning away, I'm forsaking my own way, and I'm asking you to come in and to share your thoughts with me through your word and to share your understanding and your ways with me and to make my path straight. I will acknowledge you in all of my ways. I will not shut you out of my life whenever I'm doing something that I know you wouldn't like. I will acknowledge that you are near, that you are watching Whenever I do those things that I know are not good, I will turn to you and I will say, this isn't good, is it? And I will begin to allow you to make that change in my heart. I can't make the change, but I have confidence and trust in you, oh God, that you are the one. You are the one who made me to begin with, and you are the one who can affect real change in my life. I make that commitment to you right now, and thank you very much for what you're getting ready to do, both in my life and in the body of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I hope that you've made this commitment with me. I look forward to seeing you next week. Remember to call your mom and let her know to join you to watch the Sunday morning service. And until I see you next time, be blessed. Yeah.